Throughout the history of the WWE Mattel saga, we have seen so many different WWE Elite lines. And I'm not talking about the main WWE Elite series. I am referring to the sub lines, those lines that are store exclusive, your Walmart exclusives, your Target exclusives. And I'm not even referencing the ringside exclusive sets such as from the vault or the one-off exclusives that we've seen over the number of years. I'm referring to those specific lines that pop up in stores that have been looked upon fondly. Some have not been looked upon. But today I wanted to spend a little time discussing some of those because I've been thinking about them quite a bit. So I'm just going to venture through this video and talk about some different lines and what I thought of them and what I think of them currently and how I think they would exist in a current model from Mattel. And just kind of talk about it a little bit because you guys know when I have thoughts about stuff, I have nowhere to go but you guys. So I wanted to start things off with the defining moment set. Now I'm not talking about the redefined version in the current model of 2024. Now they come in a four pack, which we've seen over the last couple years. And we're even going to get a four pack next year as well, which is ringside exclusive. But back in the day, these used to be on store pegs. You could find them at Toys R Us. You could find them at your K Kmart's, your Walmarts. Actually, could you find them at Walmart? I don't think they were Walmart. I think it was Toys R Us, Kmart, and Target were the ones that primarily carried these. But the Defining Moments line, man, I really love the way that Mattel and Ringside is doing it currently. I do like the box set idea. I like that we're getting four and they can kind of venture in there and you get them as a box set. But part of me low-key misses the days of them being a set where it was just one-offs and we would get one shipping every month or so. I really miss that. And not that every single figure in this set was a banger. I could do a whole video on that discussing the Defining Moments set and when I thought it was a miss and when I thought it was really good. But the Defining Moments set, I really do like the current model, but I kind of wish they were, you could find these on peg. Can you imagine going into the store and finding Torn Pet Cody right there? Or going into the store and finding some of these Defining Moments figures? Pipe Bomb, CM Punk, I think that that would really pop people. As much as it is, as exciting as it is and as great as it is just to lock in your pre-order, it would be cool to walk into a store and see these on the pegs. Another line that I really wish never fell off was the NXT line, man. Back in the day of the black and gold brand, the good old days of NXT, as a lot of people say, not that NXT is not amazing in its current set or that it's not good or there's no good superstars over there because I think there are still some really good things about NXT in the current state. The NXT line back in the day with the black and gold brand, man, was that, I mean, they were cooking, man. It was some of the best weekly television and pay-per-views and matches or wrestling that you could find on TV. And the NXT line had everybody buzzing, man, with the Aleister Blacks and the different figures that they were putting in this line. I mean, hell, they even made No Way Jose. I thought for sure Mattel would never make a No Way Jose. So I, I set out and made my own custom one and then what do they do brad they make their own mattel no way jose elite which completely shook me now ne never thought i would see the day and they did drop that on us there were so many good figures in the nxt line even if they were hit or miss they were very hard to find i spent forever i went to 30 targets in alabama trying to find that alistair black and i finally had to give up because i could not find it and i finally did secure one and that figure was so good i i loved that figure that was such a great figure of course before he came into the main roster but i really enjoyed the nxt line and i think that you know Mattel probably feels that it's not sustainable nowadays with the way that NXT is. It's not at, maybe it doesn't stretch out as far. Maybe it doesn't have quite the audience that it used to have when it did the rebrand. I think it lost a lot of people and all those different things, but NXT line, man, I love the NXT line. Another great line that I liked was the Entrance Greats line. I thought the Entrance Greats line was really good as well. You get the little, you know, the little sound box where you press the button and it plays the speakers. We saw it back in the day with a really cool sort of detailed basic wave, and then they did rebrand it. It went away. It, I think it started out in 2010 like when the first when the line first launched they were on shelves at Toys R Us and stuff and then they went away and then they did rebrand I think what in like 2017 2018 they came back for a little while we got some good figures out of that and then they did go away but we got to see Kurt Angle up in that line we got to see the re-release of Elite One Jeff Hardy we got to see Elias we got to see Goldberg Finn Balor one of his best demon elites came featured in the entrance greats and I think the entrance greats line was a really great line I really wish that this this would make a return I think there are some other figures that you could put in there Bobby Rude was another damn good one. So this line was, I, I loved this line. Even if the packages were absolutely massive, they were so big. And these did appear at different stores and stuff like that. I really liked the entrance greats line. That was one of the lines that I was a big fan of. But one more thing that I missed out on about the NXT line was if they still had the NXT line and that they they probably feel that they would shelf form or something like that. But you would probably get more current people or more flashbacks in the main line if you took the NXT characters out of the main line or if you didn't get them as much as a clip. Because you guys know we usually get one or two NXT guys per set nowadays. And they would probably not be featured in that if that NXT line still existed. But I guess, you know, these sublines that are store exclusive only have a specific shelf life because I don't think they, you know, they're not like, oh yeah, this is going to be a staple for the next 10 years. It's just, you know, for the next year or two, we're going to have this line available through your store. And I think that's how those conversations take place behind the scenes. But 
Let's move on to the next set. I want to talk about the Hall of Champions set. Another really cool set of figures. I like the packaging. I like how you had all the title belts behind there. Every single figure in this set did feature a championship belt. And this could be a really cool line to feature brand new championships into the wave, which would get people in those stores as well. You know, that goes back to the store exclusive thing. These were Target exclusive. Imagine, you know, they put first time belts in here nowadays, and now people are coming in and they can grab those figures and they can pick up the groceries and whatnot there. I think that would be a good selling point. So the Hall of Champions line, I think, could have lasted as well. Even if, again, those figures were hard to find, man. I don't know what it is, but it seems like, I've talked about this multiple times, seems like the last couple of years, Walmart, not not you. you. You're still very, very much amiss. But Target has done a really good job of getting these exclusives in every store. It's not just you know, the just a few stores here and there. I feel like most targets are getting these figures in, or maybe I've just had a really good draw on my targets and not a really good draw on my Walmarts, but it seems like everybody has been finding Monday Night Wars besides me, but I don't know. I don't trust Walmart with their distribution as much as Target. I trust Target much more, and I think that the Hall of Champions line, they were a miss back in the day with distribution, but I think nowadays they would probably have a better time getting those figures out to the customers or what have you, but another line that I wish never went away was the Ruthless Aggression line. I really loved this line, man. We know that it went out the window. They brought in Monday Night Wars, which is fine. You know, it's all fine and dandy, but the Ruthless Aggression line was so good. I enjoyed the hell out of the Ruthless Aggression line. I was really enjoying it. I think it could have continued on. And you know, for years, I mean, going back, back years and years, this is a fantasy book line that people used to talk about all the time. Where's the Ruthless Aggression line? This line would last. What are we doing? And, and you know, we were told multiple times that I think, you know, it was said that the Ruthless Aggression line was not sustainable at that time with different people under contract, but I, I beg to differ. I think that it would have been completely fine no matter when they did it, but I'm glad that they waited because we ended up getting double-jointed arm figures, and we ended up getting some of these great characters, Shelton Benjamin, and we got to, you know, get some of these looks of these characters that we love so much, and we got to see JBL, we got to see Tori Wilson, we got to see MVP return to the line. And so I think that that line was pretty successful. I really enjoyed the Ruthless Aggression line. Really wish it would make a return, but maybe, yes, maybe. Maybe one day we'll see that. But, uh, you know, it really stinks. I guess now I don't really know when we're going to, you know, you'll get some Ruthless Aggression, but it's going to be here and there. It's not going to be a specific line where you can get all Ruthless Aggression characters. But we do know that the Monday Night Wars line kind of came in and took that out. But let's get into some waves that I never really saw the... I was never a big fan of. I felt like, first of all, the network spotlight line, not that the figures weren't good. The figures were fine. I just didn't see the vision, I guess. I, I don't really know. I, I, it, I guess it was the launch of it was kind of in tandem with the WWE Network, and I think that's where the selling point was, was kind of trying to sell the network, and, you know, you can, you know, subscribe to the WWE Network, and here's the figures, and, you know, they're kind of like a walking advertisement for the network itself, I think, because I think those did drop around the same time that the network was coming out, or maybe a year after the network had launched, or something like that, if I do remember correctly, but I don't know, there were some good figures here, I just never saw the vision with it, I, I don't know, I just was never, like, a huge fan, like, I, of course, we got the NXT TakeOver Dallas figure. We got a really cool Vince McMahon. The AJ Styles from the Sway was good, even if I didn't like the formulas and stuff. But I don't know. I was just never a huge, huge fan of the Network Spotlight series, even if there are some solid figures in there. And then another one is the Walmart exclusive Then Now Forever sets. I like the box sets. The box sets were awesome. You guys know I love box sets. I'll always be on par with box sets. You'll never hear me complain about box sets. I am a big fan of the box sets. Now, I do hate that, you know, they're expensive and I, you know, if it's not a specific thing that I want or whatever, I'm not going to pay the full price, but I will say I do like bot sets. I like the aesthetics of them. I think they're cool packaging. There's usually some cool figures in there and things like that, but the Then Now Forever Elite sets, they weren't necessarily bad figures. I just don't know. I, I was not, like the one set with Rusev and Tyler Breeze, The Rock and Bam Bam Bigelow, it just kind of felt like it was kind of all over the place a little bit. You like had some now, you had some then, you had some forever, I guess. But I don't know. I was never like a huge fan there. I like the Rollins that they put out in that wave. The Chad Gable and Jason Jordan, I think that was the first time that we had seen those figures. That was kind of cool. I don't know. I'm sure people liked it. I was just never, I, I don't know. I remember walking into Walmart and finding those. And that was kind of, I think that was around the time that I really, really started to hardcore collect Mattel and WWE Elites. Like That's when I like started to fully dive into it as hard as possible or kind of, you know, really shifting focus there. And that was shortly before I started the channel, I do believe, is when those were launching off. And I just remember 
trying to find the box sets and I kept finding the single elites there. For some other really good sets that were going on, I just thought that you know, some of these other sets. What are some other sets that maybe you think, like, remember the Legends line went away for a little bit and then it came back at Target? I like the Hall of Fame sets, but I guess nowadays you have the Legends set. You have the Legends Greatest Hits. You have some of these other sets that are finding moments in the From the Vaults and the Greatest Hits. Those are all kind of Hall of Fame sets, so it really make no sense to really do a Hall of Fame set at this juncture. Between all the different lines that we're getting and all the different re-releases, not even counting the Monday Night Wars Greatest Hits lines that we're getting, there's so many re-release waves that a Hall of Fame set really isn't necessary, really, at this juncture. But it is still interesting to talk about and, you know, get your thoughts out there. Other sets that I was trying to think of some other sets that I never really cared for. But do you agree with me? Do you think that there are sets out there that you really like or some sets that you don't really like? I'd like to know all of that stuff down in the comment section below, man. But I think that is pretty much all the thoughts that I had, man. I thought that, you know, the Defining Moments line, wish it was at retail. NXT line, really wish that they could have somehow figured out a way to keep that sustainable and make that the main driving force for NXT figures instead of having those in the main elite line, which is fine to have them in the main elite line, but I think it would still be cool to get those NXT figures over and over. That'd just be its own NXT line that would continue to gradually come out year after year. Entrance Greats was very cool, and I think there's some other people that they could include in that. Hall of Champions, way to get first time in the line belts and stuff like that. I know that we see that in the From the Vault series, or we see that in the Defining Moments line. We see that in other ways, but I still think that would have been cool. And then the Ruthless Aggression line speaks for itself, man. Really wish we could have seen that. And then, I guess, Fantasy Booked. I thought of this random idea. You could tell me what you think about it. It probably wouldn't be a hot seller, but I think it'd be a cool concept. Think of, similar to the Retro Fest figures, you guys remember the Retro Fest elites from back in the day? I think it would be a really cool idea if you did a set of figures, maybe like three or four figures per wave, like we see in the Monday Night Wars line or we see in the Elite line and stuff. If you re re release a set of figures and each figure in the set is based off of a previous WWE or WCW or whatever video game. So, you know, here's John Cena and it's his look from SmackDown vs. Raw. Or here's Brock Lesnar from this specific game. Or here's Kurt Angle from this specific game. Or Stone Cold or whatever the case is. I think that would be really cool. And you could get some kind of unique looks that maybe they didn't necessarily rock on television. But it's their exact look from Here Comes the Pain. Or it's their exact look from this game or no mercy or whatever the case is i think that would be a really cool one and you could kind of i don't know if if you could even do that nowadays but i think it would be cool you could even it could be i guess they tried that with the retro fest kind of sort of it was gamestop exclusive but that would be a cool gamestop exclusive i think you know you tie it into video games and put it in gamestop i don't know what the hell i'm saying anyways man that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for me man i'd love to know what you think about all these things down in the comment section below let me know your thoughts man let me know your thoughts where have they missed where have they hit on all of these sub lines but i'm getting the hell out huge shout out to our patreon members man thank you guys so very much for your continued support you guys are unbelievable thank you guys so very much for all of the support over the years and everybody out there man but i'm getting out i'll see you guys next time have a blessed one i'll catch you guys later Thank you.